Hey everybody, Brayden here. Welcome back to another tournament game analysis video. We're going to be covering round eight of the Canadian Open. And I'm playing with the black pieces on an even score against someone who is also on an even score, doing quite well. Uh, I played this person before, uh, Modith. This was, uh, I, they were playing a dragon against me. And, well, rematches are always interesting. So, this time I'm playing with the black pieces. Let's see how it goes. We see e4. I play c5, the Sicilian. And we get into a classical Sicilian, nothing too crazy. They play bishop c4. I think bishop c4 was played because they expected me to play g6, which is the dragon. Like, going into a dragon a Yugoslav attack, but... I was not interested in that. There's a much stronger move here, queen b6. And the move queen b6 is very challenging to deal with, actually. Um, because the natural move bishop e3, which you want to play, is not actually that great of a move. Uh, and, and anything else, like knight b3 is maybe a little bit more promising here. But it's also not amazing after e6, and then bishop e3, queen c7. Uh, even if you see like knight b5, you, you generally don't have to worry here. Uh, this variation is pretty good for black, actually. But bishop e3 was played anyways, which is a sacrifice, and the sacrifice doesn't really work out, but it does require some accuracy. So queen takes b2. You have to take the pawn. If you don't take the pawn, then this is just not... This, it makes no sense. Bad variation. Knight db5. And now we have to worry about knight c7. But you might notice we can't stop it. This doesn't matter, actually. Queen b4. Queen to d2. Uh, was played. So the most challenging variation, I think, is uh, knight c7. Or we'll see. King d8. And uh, knight takes a8 just doesn't work because we can take on c3 first and then take on c4, and also the knight is still stuck, which is very annoying. So that would be very good for us. That's not what happened, though. Um, they played queen d2 first, but this is still very good for us. Queen takes c4, knight c7 check, king d8, knight takes a8. It's important to recognize we are a exchange down right now, but if we win the knight, then it's not an exchange down anymore. It's actually two pieces for... A rook. One imbalance that has to be noted is our king is a little bit weaker because it's on d8. This actually shouldn't matter though. Uh, b5 is best move. Idea is to potentially play b4 and then e4 is weak. And then e5 was played. And I was a bit taken back by this. I don't know why. Uh, because my worry was if I play... Knight takes e5, now they can take on a7, but this actually isn't really so good for them because we have knight e4 here. And uh, black's just immediately winning. Uh, instead, I went knight e8, which kind of gives them a little bit more play. My king's permanently stuck in the center essentially now, which is no fun, but we should still be fine because the knight should be able to be captured. Knight to d5, bishop to b7, and now bishop takes a7, which I missed. Now it's a little bit more annoying. Um, it's not the end of the world, though, as long as um, we don't allow too many complications. Like, bishop takes a8 kind of has to be played, and now they can play bishop b6 check. Um, I, I think... Um, oh, we'll get to that. Uh, bishop to b6, check king c8, bishop e3, uh, king b8. Uh, this has to be played, by the way, because of knight b6, winning the queen here. Um, so it's just our prophylactic move, knight b6, and then queen b4 was played. This is not really the right approach. Um, and it, it's kind of hard to see why, though, right? I think it takes a lot of foresight to see. So... Originally, I was going to play queen g4, but I was thinking, why not throw in queen b4? What's the big deal? What's the difference? 
there's actually a huge difference here between queen b4 and queen g4. One is okay, one isn't. Queen g4 is equal. Queen b4 is losing. Let's find out. c3 obviously has to be played. If they trade queens, then everything's justified, we're fine. But, of course, c3. Queen g4. We're attacking the pawn. Uh, this is a big deal. If they castle, the problem is there's moves like knight e5 that uh, they'll run into trouble with because we're threatening mate and we're threatening knight f3 here. And all of a sudden, we have uh, a little bit of initiative on our hands. So they should not allow this. Um, but okay, queen b4, c3, queen g4, f3, queen h4 check, g3, queen h5. Why does this matter? Well, what I was looking at is if they castle, maybe we have some sort of like 95s, or maybe bishop b7 and then 95. Uh, and I thought maybe this is okay. It's not though, uh, because they can take on a8 in this position and then play a4. And now we're starting to see, slightly starting to see why queen b4 was a bad addition. We do not have b4 here. I ended up taking in the game, we'll get to that, but we're starting to see the outlines of why it was so important to not play queen b4. Let's go all the way back though. So no queen b4. What if the immediate queen g4? Okay, f3, queen h4, check, g3, queen h5. What if knight takes a8 this time? After king takes a8 and a4, yeah, we actually have, um, we have b4 here. And c3 doesn't really work because f3 is hanging. Uh, if they castle, it honestly doesn't really matter. I, I think even queen a5 uh, might make sense here. Knight e5 as well. Um, actually, maybe knight e5 won't. We want to avoid maybe something like knight c7 might be a bit more promising. Uh, but we see the point is that they're immediately opening up the a file, whereas here they're not. And actually, it's the difference of being losing or being equal. Let's get to another variation here. So um, f3, queen h4 check, uh, g3, queen h5. If uh, castles, uh, bishop b7, c4, there's, um, there's knight e5. And this one is also equal. It's very, very hard to see, though, that... Uh, this is like the big difference is that taking on a8 immediately isn't as good um, anymore. And here we're okay. It's hard to see that we're okay because we have to see knight c6 and see that if they just give checks, they could get a repetition if they wanted to, or they could continue on with something like queen c3, um, where a natural move like bishop e7 would just lose the game, for example, because they can take and all of a sudden... Uh, Actually, no, I think this is okay as long as we don't play bishop f6. No, I, I, this might actually be wrong, like wrong. I'm not even sure. Let's let's turn on the engine because I, <laughs> I have no idea. This position's absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's equal um, figures uh, in this position. Just bishop f6 isn't. You have to see knight e5, which is because you want to cover d7. Um, and that's easy to miss because if you play this then knight d7 check and you have nowhere good to go if you go to the a file then, then there's problems with the check on a3 if you go to c8 then they can take and then take oh it says takes on b5 is best anyways not important uh that's just something to to bring up here so absolutely wild lines but unfortunately the move was not correct and I was starting to see that in this position after a4, because I wish I had b4, but unfortunately I messed up. I wish I had something like queen takes f3, it just doesn't work because they take with check, and this is a problem. So um, that where the wouldn't work out. And then they can play something like rook to f1. But okay, a4, I actually ended up taking it I thought this was maybe the most practical chance, which looks insane. It looks ridiculous. But my idea here was I was hoping that I can get defenders near the king in time, which I don't think was ridiculous. It's just so hard. 
Uh, like queen b2 looks tempting because rook takes a4 uh, is a big problem now. Um, and I think I was looking at queen a5 here. And if castles something like d5 and then maybe even a3. And we're starting to see like, okay, this looks awful for us, but you know, maybe if we put our pawn on a3, it could be annoying. Still feels very bad. But the goal here is if we can somehow trade queens, we, we'll probably win the game because we have the two pieces versus the rook. But that's very far away. B takes a4. They take back immediately because queen b2, there's this queen a5 stuff with maybe potential defense. King b7. And I start running to the center where I'm hoping that I can just use my pieces as a way to just turtle. Queen b2 check. King c7, queen b6 check, king d7, queen b7 check, knight c7, and then they played rook a8 here. Um, and uh, rook a8 causes some problems because we have to play knight e7, and when we play knight e7, they now have rook a7. They don't have... Uh, um, bishop b6 because now we can give a check and then take on on c3 but here uh the big problem is rook a7 and there's not really a good way to defend because queen c5 is cut off uh the knight on c6 was actually doing a very good defensive job there but they castled and luckily now everything's okay uh, unfortunately that spoils the move but queen d5 and now all of a sudden it's actually um winning for us because there's no way to avoid a trade of queens if they move their queen we win the rook in the corner and that's too much material with a rook bishop and queen it's still a little bit of material for them uh left if they sack the rook but it's definitely not enough and we should be totally winning so rook a7 was played i immediately traded knight to c8 just to continue my turtling um and uh this just prevents bishop b6 Rook f to b1 now. Bishop to e7. I'm just trying to develop on the long diagonal here. Rook b8. Rook e8. Um, expecting rook b7. And then I just go bishop f6. And luckily everything's holding. Uh, they try another move here. Bishop b6. But I'm okay. I can just take it. And sure they can trade down. But this doesn't really work too much for them uh because what happens is we just get into the position that i mentioned before which is two minor pieces versus a rook this is actually totally winning so i set up a little trap here for my opponent which is bishop takes c3 and actually they end up falling for it so bishop takes c3 rook e7 check knight d7 and then rook takes f7 black to move and win it's not the most ridiculous thing it's not that hard to find but it is kind of important to see this you don't need to play it like this to win but it just makes things so much easier so the move is bishop f6 and the idea is we're just going to play king d8 and king e8 and the rook is trapped uh and something we had to calculate is g4 g5 but they're just not in time king d8 g5 and then we have king e8 here. Uh, and we do not care that they're attacking f6. So they take on d7. And we do not have to take the rook. We just play bishop d4 check first. We could take the rook. I think this is totally fine. This should be winning. But there's absolutely no reason to do that. When we can just be up a full bishop as well. Uh, king takes d7. My opponent played on a little bit here. King e2. King e6. King d3. Bishop a7 h4 g6 king e4 d5 check king f4 bishop f2 um just trying to provoke either king g4 king e5 or h5 which they end up playing i took it g6 i took that as well king g5 bishop e3 check asking where they're gonna go because if they take on g6 the h pawn runs um, and if they play f4, I could take f4 or I could push my d-pawn. But after f4, I just start pushing my d-pawn. And after king h4 and, and bishop takes f4 here, my opponent ends up resigning. Uh, luckily, not a stalemate. It's very important to watch out for those. But 
that's how the game went. It was a very rocky one. Um, objectively, I'm winning here, but I should have definitely played better. Uh, this was the start of the problems, uh, missing knight takes e5. The fact that this was actually winning because of knight e4. This isn't really the hardest thing to see either. Uh, hindsight's 2020, but the year is 2022. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but uh, yeah, it's just really important to to mention. Also, uh, one thing that. Maybe I forgot is that knight takes e4, this queen takes e4, picking up the knight in the corner. And that's uh, another reason why the variation is really good. So that's going to cover it for round number eight. We're actually entering the final round with a plus one score after being minus two. So once we got minus two, three wins in a row. Can we make it a fourth? I guess we will have to find out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the final round of the Canadian Open. Have a good one. Bye-bye.